Hello, Squad Fam, and welcome to another Sinister Sunday. Um, it is my birthday tomorrow, Monday, April 11th. So I'm doing a special birthday one, as you see all the balloons. But this week, we are going all the way to Scotland. And it's called Colladen Moor, Scotland. And it was a big battlefield, so let's find out about this. <laughs> Come here. Come on, come see the video. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I got him on video. So, this little doggy is licking my coffee. Today, we're actually going to Scotland. So, nothing balloony about this area. <laughs> we're going to Colden Moor in Scotland. The Battle of Colden was the final confrontation of the Jacobite rising of 1745. On April 16th, 1746, the Jacobite army of Charles Edward Stuart was defeated by a British government force under Prince William Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, on Dromosey's Moor near Inverness in the Scottish Highlands. I'm sorry to all the Scottish people if I said any of that wrong. So basically, this was a battlefield. They actually have a lot of books on this place, so let's get right into more of the history. So I'll tell you about a few people who died there. Deaths. Charles McLean of Drimmon was killed with two of his sons. James Dermond, third Duke of Perth and chief of Clan Drummond was severely wounded. He was carried from the field, but died on his way to France. Alexandra McDougall of Kepach, chief of Clan McDougall, was killed. So a few people were killed there during battle, and these were like, I guess, high up people at the time. So, yes, now let's hear what has been going on since then. Because it says it's one of the most haunted places and places you should not visit alone. It's on the top 50 list. So let's see why. Just a little more history on this site. So this uh, Colden Moor was the site of the last ever battle on British soil. The battle which ended in a bloody slaughter on April 16th, 17th. 1946 of the Jacobite Rebellion, who wanted the Stuarts to return to the throne. In just 40 minutes of fighting, the entire army of Bonnie Prince Charles was dead. The chances of them succeeding were slim to non-existent as it was. The bogey ground was not suited to the highland charge on the top of that. The governmental forces vastly outnumbered them, and they were also exhausted after several days of marching back from England where they had tried to drum up support for the battle. Finally, taking it upon themselves, they decided to charge the government troops, and that was on April 17th. The troops that managed to escape the artillery fire from the government were cut down as soon as they hit the enemy lines. Again, they were outthought and outclassed as the government troops used a new method of attack against the Highland Charge. Each soldier drove his sword, or bayet, I hope I said that right, into the Highlander, directly facing the soldier to his right so that they could pierce underneath the Highlander's sword armor. The slaughter continued after the men were wounded and unable to fight as government troops executed every man they could find, and ones that managed to get away were hunted down and slaughtered. Bonnie Prince Charles had evaded the pursuing forces for five months throughout the Scottish Highlands until the, he escaped to Italy via the Isle of Skye, never to return. So that was basically just a little history on what the battle, what happened with the battle and why it was going on, because they wanted different government 
On the anniversary of the Bloody Battle, which is April 16th, ghosts of soldiers fallen are said to have risen again, and the cries of the wounded and clanking of steel weapons are heard. Ooh, so that's a place to visit on April 17th. Since April 17th is coming right around the corner, anybody who's near Scotland, get, get in gear and get your spare boxes out. On many occasions, similar reports have been made of a tall man with drawn features being seen roaming the area. When approached, he is heard mumbling the words, defeated. In 1936, there was a report from one woman who had lifted a tartan cloth covering one of the grave's mounds, only to discover that there was an apparition of a severely wounded Highlander underneath it. Birds are said never to sing in the area surrounding the mounded graves, perhaps too afraid of the ominous atmosphere. Ooh. There are also numerous wells all around the area which are said to be haunted. St. Mary's Well, in particular, is supposed to be haunted by the ghost of the dead Highlanders. Cludy Well also has some mysterious surrounding it. It supposedly offers a cure for ailments with brightly colored rags as the offering from sick people of past years. You can visit this place. Entry price is $11. It's in like their money. So it's $11 for adults, $27 for family, and $9.50 for concessions. The battlefield is open daily and visitors can come in from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Super interesting. So that's one site. Let's see if we can find any like investigations or other stories about this place. So everybody seems to have the same experiences, okay, because in under an hour, nearly 1,500 Jacobite soldiers were killed. And that was the last battle fought on British soil and one of the most famous. You could still hear from the locals saying that they hear gunfire, swords, and crying echoes in the empty moor, particularly on the anniversary of the battle, as well as sounds of combat. Figures of a lone Jacobite soldier reportedly roams the battlefield, wandering in his clan, Tarin. Uh, he's not the only ghostly visit visitor to the site. Close to the battlefield is the house that Bonnie Prince Charles, leader of the Jacobite Rebellion, slept in the night before the battle. Although now a hotel, it is said that the prince still lingers there wearing full Highland dress, waiting for the battle that will restore him to his throne. That makes sense, even though he fled and died somewhere else, that he would go back there in his death. He's a medium and a historian. Richard Felix appeared in a television series, Most Haunted. The medium claimed the team had invented a device that helped to explore a theory that Stone acts as kind of a video recorder capturing the past. Oh yeah, so they say that limestone is good for residual so basically uh, if you've ever watched ghost hunters back in the day they used to tell you that the limestone if there's a lot of live limestone around you will get a lot of residual hauntings because it exactly holds in everything and it's like a video recorder that plays and those spirits you can't interact with because they're just replaying it over and over they're not actually there Okay, in case you did not know about residual hauntings, there you go. <laughs> Audience members were also invited to take part in an experiment called the human pendulum, where a person rocks gently backwards and forward in response to questions to a spirit. That's interesting. Never heard about all this. The Green Lady. It has been claimed the ghost of Isabel Goldie has been seen. Goldie was the subject of a witch trial in 1662. That area in general is very haunted because a lot of stuff obviously happened there. In 2006, Road Construct Film 
put the A9 in the Highlands as the second most haunted on the list of spooky roads after a family reported seeing an ornate coach and horses along with a bewildered footman. <laughs> the road appeared again at number eight on the list of sightings of a Victorian clad man on a horse at the mound between Gornuck and Gillespie. Interesting. So the whole area leading into it and out of it is obviously haunted. The inns around it are haunted. <laughs> and I wonder what those devices that can they actually can prove that this is what happens with limestone. Oh, they actually have a museum that you could go to on the battlefield. Also a mass war grave site. Well she said over the mounds there was an apparition. Oh, he's talking all about the museum and how it covers everything. It has like muskets and cannons and all this. Oh, it's nice. It has pictures of like the stuff they used on the battlefield. So all in all, very cool place. Very haunted. I don't know if there's anything more sinister than 1,500 people dying in about 45 minutes. Of course, why wouldn't it be haunted? <laughs> you know, I'd haunt the place too. They said the soldiers, some of them couldn't fight anymore. They were very badly wounded and they still went and killed them. Not good etiquette. Yeah, I wonder if those people, the government's troops who did that, if they could sleep at night. Okay guys, so this is super interesting. I'm going to put the picture down here. So right where like the, you could take a tour of where like the battle was and you could see the ruins and that super haunty road. Um, so there's no need to worry about hiring a car to navigate the Highland Road. Now that's the road where they saw all that stuff going on. Um, there's a tour and you also go by right where supposedly the Loch Ness Monster lives right over there. So yeah, <laughs> so that's fun. So you can see a lot of stuff there. So if you're going to Scotland, can you guys please take pictures of that for me? Uh, see if you see Nessie. Tell her I said hello. <laughs> All right, squad fam. This was super fun. And thanks for joining me on another Sinister Sunday. We have a lot of them going on right now. Uh, what are we up to? 17, I think. Yes, so we're, we've been doing good for Sinister Sundays. So we've also been cooking, cooking up a storm. I'm getting fat again. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the Sinister Sunday. Don't forget to thumbs up. Leave me a comment, please. If you know anything about this place, maybe you did it in your history class because I know I have a lot of UK fam. So definitely let me know if you've been there if you heard of it and all that good stuff and if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing um we do all sorts of stuff here like i said cooking and these history things some paranormal investigations crafts whatever we could do whatever we could find whatever we feel like that day that's what we're doing here and uh, sorry for all the balloons on my head because it's my birthday tomorrow, so I wanted some balloons. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and we will see you on the next adventure.